Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except Ava awake at 4 a.m. to make a panettone. Hi, I'm Harper. Salam, Ava. First of all, we wanted to wish you guys a big Merry Christmas. Uh, to all of our wonderful, lovely pasta grammarians out there, we've had just such a fun year. Uh, it's been so much fun uh, sharing our videos with you guys and learning a lot from you too. We're really looking forward to the next year. So if you're new here and you like Italian food, hit that subscribe button because uh, that's what we do. <laughs> Today though, uh, we're here to talk about a disaster, a behind the scenes disaster. Uh, from one of our previous videos. Uh, it's a story that we've actually wanted to tell for quite some time, uh, and so today we're finally doing it. Arper, but in order to tell the story, we need to explain uh, people how our video works. That's true. So, Ava in our videos cooks a lot of amazing Italian food for me, and all of that is happening in real time. Like, when she introduces me to a new dish, it's not like she tested the recipe the day before and, you know, was, you know, fiddling with it, whatever. It, she's really cooking in real time, off the top of her head, and that is truly the first time I've ever usually seen or heard of the dish. With one exception. Eh, uh, si, sì, uh, the exception uh, is the panettone, guys. In our video last Christmas, Ava made an amazing, beautiful panettone. And it is the only time, the only time, that Ava has ever had to repeat a recipe and repeat it. And repeat it. And repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> and repeat it a few more times. We get a ton of recipe requests, whether it's in the comments, whether it's on social media. People write us and they'll be like, hey, can you make this, can you make that? And I often see those and it'll usually be a name for a dish I've never heard of. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll tell Ava like, hey, I'm seeing a lot of requests for this. I don't even know what it is, but I just have the name. Like people are asking for uh, taralli, you know? And so then Ava will put that in her mental bank and then if she has an opportunity to bring it out uh, in a video, then she'll do so. So around Christmas last time, I guess it was around like Thanksgiving, uh, I started seeing a lot of requests for panettone. So now, this panettone is a very tall uh, cake. We call it cake or uh, sweet bread. Then, when you look at, that, when you look at it, uh, it doesn't seem so appetizing or so wonderful or good. But guys, when you start to dig in, you can understand uh, how good it is. Yeah, you can't really, from looking at it, you can't really tell just how like buttery it is and it just dissolves in your mouth. It's simple, it's so delicious, it's absolutely amazing. So I mentioned this to Ava, I said a lot of people are requesting panettone. It'd be great if you could find a way to work that into a video maybe. To which her reply was, Alper, you are crazy. <laughs> I'm not going to do the panettone. Now Eva has made panettone before, but she had some really good reasons for why it wasn't a good dish to suddenly bring out in a video. No, because when you want to make the panettone, you need to start at least one month, one month and a half before. So what you need to do one month and a half before is start to prepare your sourdough. Lievito, yeah, lievito you need madre. Like natural sourdough yeast. So if you have it before, from I don't know, like one year before, two years before, uh, much, much better. Otherwise, at least you need to prepare it. And it takes uh, a certain time to be ready. We only like to cook food that we can actually like share the recipe with other people. So if a few days before Christmas, Ava dropped a panettone in a video, it's not like anyone could just be like, oh, well, I'd like to make that because, oh, well, sorry, it's too late. You needed to start a few months ago. So that's when I had the brilliant idea of let's announce on social media that we're going to make panettone and we'll start to release instructions for how to follow along in making the natural yeast so that people can join us. So we start to make our natural yeast, we start to post photos on Instagram to explain people how it works uh, and all that. And then uh, when my natural yeast was ready, it was time to make the panettone. You start to make 
the first dough. And the first dough is made with natural yeast and flour and butter and eggs. So after you made this first dough, you need uh, it to let uh, rest uh, and uh, grow at least uh, for, uh, I don't know, it depends from your yeast, but it can take also 12, 15 hours. Then when after 15 hours from a dough of this size, you have a dough of this size, you start to make the second dough which imply the first dough and more uh, eggs uh, and more egg yolks uh, and more butter and more flour and then the candy fruit uh, and honey and orange, all this stuff. Then, when everything is ready, you let it uh, rest uh, until uh, it's really is something like that and then uh, you work uh, again and then finally you bake it. Not only is there that whole process behind it, but it's also an extraordinarily sensitive recipe. Uh, if you're off by a gram with one of the ingredients, uh, it can ruin the whole thing. Uh, if the temperature of your dough is off, it can ruin the whole thing. Ava would have to stick a thermometer into the dough to check the temperature as she's mixing it and if it got too hot, she would have to stick it in the fridge, or actually, what we even did was, we would just put it outside, because in Maine it was so cold, she would just stick it outside and it would quickly drop in temperature, and then she would keep working on it again. So there's a lot that can go wrong. And uh, guys, everything that can go wrong, uh, went wrong. <laughs> because the recipe is so sensitive, and you really have to dial everything in and tweak it in, this was again the one time when Ava did like tests in advance to make sure that everything was okay. So Ava started with the f the first panettone, and I don't I don't even remember what what went wrong with that one. The first didn't rise at all. <laughs> it didn't rise. <laughs> Completely. But we thought, oh, okay, you know that's the first one. Maybe maybe you just need to make some tweaks and and you know Ava will get there. And then she tried to make the second one. And the second one rise though, a little bit more. But the consistency wasn't right. It was all very, very dense. And when I cooked it, some part they were burned, some part they were liquid. It was another huge disaster. And then there was the third. And the third uh, was uh, quite an experience. It was like uh, when you see like something is happen, it's happening, something is uh, more or less uh, right. And then uh, he rises, uh, was okay. I went because when you need to let it cool down, you can't take out of the oven. You need to flip the panettone. When I went to flip the panettone, the panettone <laughs> completely collapsed on the carpet. Uh, and at the time, we were both working at uh, my mother's toy company in Maine, uh, of all things. That's what we were doing. <laughs> and. Uh, and it was decided by all that Ava's primary focus from now until the release of the video was just make panettone work. So she just took off from work. We was just like, everyone was just like, go, go, make this happen. And so Ava was home all day, every day, cooking panettone and starting each one as soon as like the other one was started basically because they take so long and you don't know if it's gonna be successful or not. You would like start one and then an hour later start another one. So my life was uh, completely, was just uh, being home. I don't wake up in the morning, then in the morning. It depends because sometimes I wake up also like at three in the night because the panettone was ready at three in the night so I had to go in the kitchen to bake it. So my life was just dedicated to the panettone. I don't know, for uh, one week and a half, uh, two weeks, uh, when the panettone called, I was there. Meanwhile, I'm at work and I'm worried about how Ava's doing, how the panettone is going. So I would be like texting her like, how's the panettone doing? And so like you make panettone in these paper molds and Ava would send me pictures and she would like draw little marker lines on them to see like how much they were rising and she would send me a picture, and then a few hours later, I'd be like, send me another picture. She'd send it to me, and I'd be like, zooming in on the picture, like, did it rise a centimeter? I, I think so, I think maybe this is the one. Speaking of those Panettone papers, 
we were starting to run low. And uh, not only was it Christmas, so all the delivery services were very backlogged, it was also, well, you guys know what was going on in December 2020. It was, you know, not a great time for uh, logistics. <laughs> so uh, we tried ordering more Panettone papers, uh, and they were running very late. We actually got to the point where uh, Ava made her own panettone paper molds out of parchment paper stapled together. I used all my creativity to make uh, the most important panettone of my life. Ava started to wonder if maybe that the reason the panettone wasn't working was simply just a matter of ingredients. Like, for instance, in Italy, you would use a, a different flour than what's available here. Uh, si, Harper. In, uh, in Italy, actually, we have a, a flour made just for panettone, for what we call grandi lievitati. And here it was impossible to find the, the flour, uh, so I had uh, to adjust what I find. But you also tried buying the the best, most expensive butter you could find, just in case it might make a difference. Finding the best farm fresh eggs you could find, just in case it would make a difference. It didn't make a difference. I'm just editing this video now, and I realized the very important part of the story, which is that Ava was making so much panettone that our old stand mixer actually started smoking which is why I gave her as an early Christmas present the now infamously controversial new KitchenAid. Um, okay, carry on. We had one Panettone paper mold left, and it was, I think, the day before we needed to release the video. But we just thought, just to be extra sure, I, me, yes, me, will just go through and just double check all the measurements. So when Ava was, you know, measuring out the butter and the salt and all that, I would just, just have two sets of eyes. I would double check everything. Like, okay, we have 60 grams of this, we have 50 grams of this, etc. Well, we came down to the butter. The measurement was absolutely correct. It was like, I don't remember how many grams, but I was checking, I was like, okay, got that many grams. Her recipe said butter, but then I'm looking at the butter she's using, <laughs> And I have to ask her, Ava, is it supposed to be salted butter? To which she said, What salted butter, Harper? What is this? Apparently salted butter is not very common in Italy. When I go and buy the grocery, when I go and buy food, I do like I do in Italy. So when I go in Italy, at least in the south of Italy, where I lived, it wasn't so common, the salted butter. So when you go and buy the butter, you take the butter and go home. So I did the same. So I saw some butter, take the butter and go home. In a recipe that's that sensitive, and that is essentially high-level chemistry, you can imagine what adding a huge, generous dose of salt into the mixture can do. So. It was go time. We only had one panettone paper left. I went to the grocery shop <laughs> to buy the unsalted butter, the normal butter that we find in Italy. I still remember that I woke up around maybe five in the morning to bake the panettone. And you know what? Now this is the moment of the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the panettone came out. It was amazing. It was amazing. That's all it took. <laughs> it was a slight change of ingredients and it came out perfect. It's a miracle. A miracle. In the end, it all worked out. Well, it worked out for Ava's panettone because I had my own cooking disaster, which was my cookies. <laughs> it kind of looks like the Grinch puked all over this baking tray. But which actually I put a lot of effort into and I did research on and they looked so cool in my head and that came out as a big disaster. Well they were good they were good out there. They did taste good. They they were good. We got a bunch of pictures at the time of people at home who used the recipe, tried their own panettone, and made awesome looking panettone. That being said, it is a difficult recipe even if you're using the correct ingredients. And as you said before, we love to give a recipe that all people, they can do at home. So, but I thought this time that maybe we can show you how to make 
a panettone that is not the real panettone, but it's very, very close. It gives you the taste of Christmas and it's much, much easier. Does it take three days? No, I don't. Do you need to monitor the temperature of the dough? No. Will the whole thing be ruined if you add an extra gram of salt? No. Can you show me? See? Si. Are you sure that's unsalted butter? 100% sure. that it didn't take three days, it only took two days. But it's not three days. You don't have to work on the yeast for uh, one month and a an half, so it's pretty fast. It was insanely simple compared to the real <laughs> panettone. But let's see how it tastes compared to a real panettone. We need to understand if it tastes good or not. Bon appetito! That is <laughs> much better per unit of stress and anxiety put into it than the real panettone. You can tell that several things are missing here, but if you don't want to dedicate all your life to the panettone, it's a good substitute. It's really good. It's a little bit denser than a normal panettone, not quite as buttery melt in your mouth, but surprisingly close. I mean, it's really good. That being said, I noticed that you have your uh, fresh yeast ready to go for a real panettone. 
Yes, I have over there because... Uh... Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> if any of you out there are really adventurous and want like a crazy project recipe, we still really encourage you to try to make a real panettone. It's very rewarding in the end. That being said, if you're looking for just a simple way to get those panettone feels, this is a pretty good option. Oh, are you eating all? Mm -hmm. Guys, we really hope you enjoyed uh, this look at uh, our biggest cooking disaster. The recipe for the easy panettone will be down below. You can also find the normal panettone on our website, pastagrammar.com. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on social media, at pastagrammar, because we'll be posting a lot of fun Christmassy things we'll be doing <laughs> this week. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Ciao.